Hi, is everybody doing? I am Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, coming to you on YouTube Live. And I tell you what, man, things are going crazy, but you know what? Luckily, we're, we're still kind of busy right now. I know the phones have slowed down a lot, but the cool thing about it is, man, we're, we're still working right now. So my question is, man, we, and we've already got people in here. That is wonderful. My question is, who all's working? Uh, who's working? Who's not? I see that we have got uh, Marcy Walker in here. You got me in here. That's great. Uh, Will Rosebrock, my moderator, my chief marketing officer, and my and guys. I've actually got the volume on on my phone today, which I normally don't do, but I've got guys out working on a job, and they're having an issue, so I'm going to kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, and Will's my digital underlord, so kind of cool we're fixing to try out something new just to see what y'all think can y'all see that and i'm gonna move around here and it looks great so cool deal uh i love this got james scoggins in here man good to see you nico nico welcome back uh i'm here i like that so we're kind of playing around with some different things you know that we've got the different cameras going but just kind of playing with some different things and having fun We've got Jonathan R. Man, congratulations. I am glad you're ready. So, guys, tell me if y'all are working or not. And I know a lot of people are. I know a lot of people aren't. I know a lot of people are, I mean, locked down, tighter than Dick's hat, man. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's what it's going to take for everybody to get over this. But just for, for right now, are y'all working? What's going on? Uh, Barty Films 85 in here. Hi, Roger. You had our first COVID case up here today. Brother, I am sorry to hear that. Uh, you had to say no to a job because I found out that the customer was in quarantine because they had traveled and they had not bothered to tell us. Man, that's just not right. And I mean, I think in Texas, it might be actually legal to shoot somebody for that. I'm joking, but man, the thought would definitely cross my mind. Uh, man, it's not right that they're not telling. And you know, Barney, I'm Barney Films 85, you were in here last week. I believe that you heard me talk about or where I read the script of things that our CCR, our call center rep, is talking to people about. We have Christina Smallhorn in here. She is working on my YouTube. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys, building great relationships with great people is fantastic. If y'all know real estate agents or anybody in the real estate industry, y'all need to connect with Christina Smallhorn. Her channel is fantastic. We were in a class together about six months ago. She actually learned a lot more in it than I did, but she's smarter. So, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to have to ignore phone calls too. But the neat thing about it is you, know, you build relationships, you build communities, and you work with people, and you do things together. So it's been kind of cool. So I'm going to jump back over here to the comment screens. Uh, Christina, great to have you in here. I really do appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, James Coggins, how many men do you have in the field working? I'll tell you what, James, right now, it, it's me and two others. And, man, we're, we're running. Uh, now, like I said, <laughs> got Mike Hadfield drunk from Germany. Y'all keep an eye on, my, on Mike. Uh, Mike, how are you doing? I hope everything's going good over there. How, uh, how, how is it going over there? We are kind of, and I want to say in the beginning of the COVID thing, because I think it's going to take a while. But my question to you is, Mike, how's it going over in Germany? Are they doing things to take care of it? Are you home? Is that what the deal is, or what's up? Ryan Swam, good to see you in here. And I think that's great that we got so many people in here already. That's fantastic. Miller Twice, good to have you. How are you? Okay, so Ryan says slow. And, and guys, that, that's something that, man – we're just we're gonna have to deal with it. We know it's gonna be slow for a while. We know that. We know with everything going on, it's gonna it's gonna be that way. So my question, to y'all, is number one: Are you working? Uh, but number two, tell me this: How long do y'all think this is gonna last? Because I know that we just extended this through April the thirtieth, and you know Texas is is. And I, I think that a lot of the counties think that they're on their own. They can make up their own rules. 
But I know that the governor has stepped up and said, hey, look, this is going to go on until April 30th. I really think this is going to go on until September, October. I think it's going to take that long. But I want to know what y'all think. Uh, Deontay Richardson, currently waiting for your UA to schedule your interview uh, with the virus. Don't know when that will be, but definitely excited. Deontay, that's great. Number one, where at? What local? Uh, and, guys, if y'all hear that, I'm sorry about that. I will turn the volume all the way down. And I normally don't keep my phone on. Y'all know that. But like I said, I've got guys out in the field, and they're experiencing a little bit of a problem. So I want to be able to help them. Uh, you know, my thing is, I, I know that I know that this is going to last a while. I still think we're in the beginning of it, though. So, man, it's just it's going to be it's going to be tough. Deontay, where's your local? What local are you in? And the reason I ask is I've reached out to a lot of people in the locals here lately, uh, just connecting on LinkedIn trying to grow my community, reaching out to the right people. But my thing also about it is I want to be in a position that when things are back to normal, when people are looking for, for hands, when we're looking for new apprentices, when people are looking for plumbers to put on to work, we're doing something and we've got something going to try to help people out. <clears throat> Nico Nico, stop to work because it's too risky. There's no masks and no hydroalcoholic gel in France. And I tell you what, and I talked to Julie, my wife, while ago. She is actually, Julie's actually out right now shopping, trying to get some bleach and some spray bottles. Uh, we do know how to make, you know, a cleaner that, that'll help get rid of it or, or kill the virus if it's on the surface. But we're trying to look at what we can do to, God, make it better for our guys. That's a big deal. Miller Twice learned a lot about plumbing last week during your quarantine. Watch this channel, Paul Peck Construction Cronies, Drain Addicts, got to learn any others you recommend. Man, I'll tell you what, to be honest, you've got some good ones there. Uh, the, the neat thing is uh, Paul Peck's normally in here. Construction Cronies is normally in here. Drain Addicts, we've watched a lot of what they're doing. Uh, got to learn, has got some good stuff going on. You know, to be honest, I, I don't know that I just watched a ton of them. I like the way you've picked a few. And I, I think, like I said, I, I think you've got some really good ones there. So, man, stick with them. Uh, you know, the, the first one you mentioned, you know, watch this channel. Man, I think that's the best one if you want to learn plumbing. And really, I'm, I'm kind of playing there. But here's the deal is you can watch too many channels, and it's kind of like having too many chefs in the kitchen. Everybody wants to do something different. I love the fact that you're looking at different trades. Uh, Construction Cronies, their channel's amazing. Paul Peck is too. Uh, Drain Addicts, I know Will and them, they love watching that. It's pretty wild and some pretty crazy stuff. But, you know, I think that they're doing a lot of things right. So, like I said, I think you got some good ones. I think you can learn a lot. Uh, and binge watch it. You know, Will and I have talked because we have people comment and say, look, I've binge watched your channel all day long today, and wow, I feel like I really did pick up a lot. <clears throat> and there's times you'll have to go back and go through it again. And what I mean is you can go through the channel, you know, and watch every video once and stuff like that, but you're gonna, you're gonna, it's going to be like drinking water from a fire hose. You're going to get too much. And then you're going to say, hey, I need to take a break uh, and maybe just not watch YouTube for a couple of days. I know that sounds tough, but that's really not true. Watch some other channels. That way it's just something different. Then come back and watch them again. Every time you come back and watch, even me, whenever I come back and watch and go through them, I'll be like, man, I forgot all about that. I forgot I mentioned that. Or I forgot that I told somebody I was going to do that. So man, coming back and watching again is, is really a good thing to do. <clears throat> Victor, man, I hate that. Uh, and guys – Everybody tell me where you're at, because I'm really curious. And that's three things. Where are you at? Uh, what's going on? Are you working? Is everybody laid off? Is everybody sitting at home in quarantine? What's really happening out there? And, you know, how long do you think this is going to last? Because I think this is going to take a little while. And, man, I hate to say it, because I really I don't like it, but I think that's what's going to happen. So Victor says all the construction is shut down. <clears throat> Ethan Varghese, good to see you in here again. 
You know, here's the thing, guys. And I made this comment last week while we were in here talking about New York. The service plumbers are working. The construction plumbers are working. You know, they've got these construction sites going 90 miles an hour. But you're taking construction workers, you're jamming them in a buck hoist. You know, you got 20 or 30 people in here, elbow to elbow. <clears throat> it's not a good way to be. Construction sites to me, and, and I hate to say it, and those of y'all that are in construction, you're like, look, at least I'm working, I'm happy. I think if we're going to combat this thing and fight this thing, we're going to have to say, look, we all need to just stay home. Now, I'm a service plumber, so I see my end of it a little different too. If somebody's got a leak that's flooding their house, somebody's got sewer backing up, somebody's got, uh, you know, one of these problems, guys, it it happens. Uh, those have to be taken care of because water is essential, and I get it. So it's tough. Okay, so Victor says, construction is shut down in Philly, Boston, San Francisco, L.A. <clears throat> and like I said, I, I think construction should be. But it's it's tough. I get that. Uh, Jonathan says from New York, it's a ghost town. Uh, man, September I, th I think is probably going to be it, Jonathan. the The good thing about that is, God, I don't know. Is there a good thing about it? the The good thing about it is, by September I think that we've got a control on things. I think that that by September we 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 not just have a control on things. We actually. We know what's going on. We're getting it taken care of. And hopefully by then, they've got stimulus packages in place. Uh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, six employees. And the tough thing about it is, you know, if we're not running calls, if we're not working, there's no money to pay them. And it gets really tough because it's like, okay, what do we do and how do we do it? And my wife checked in with the SBA today. They said, look, you're really basically we're not eligible. Uh, we're not eligible for that. We're not eligible to delay payments. We're not eligible for anything. So it's like, okay, what do we do? And that's what we've got to start looking at. And I know it's going to get crazy. It's going to get crazy for a lot of us. But, man, we're going to have to find out how to take care of each other. And that's going to be part of what we do. <clears throat> Nico, Nico, you agree with me. Because our governments aren't taking the right decisions, too many odds. Man, and, and I think you're right. And I, I think it's going to take locking everybody down. And, it, you know, it's funny, Christina's in here. We talked about that earlier. I really think that it's going to take shutting things down and just telling people, look, you can't go anywhere. And I know that that's hard to do, but I think that we need to tell people, look, you need to stock up at home, you need to get ready. Because we know it's coming. We know, man, we, we know that's what it's going to take. We're either going to have to lock people down for two weeks so people with the virus get sick, get over it, get beyond it, get treated, get whatever they can do. Those of us that don't have it, it gives it time to die out because now we're not spreading it. And when Christina and I were talking earlier, she said, look, I think everybody needs to be locked down for 20 days. And, you know, as soon as she said it, I thought, you know what? You're probably right. Uh, Deontay Richardson, 55 in Ohio, and any help would be appreciated. Man, I don't know what we can do to help, or I don't know what I can do to help. I know that I, I am reaching out to the locals because I think that when this is said and done, uh, those of us that are still able to to get out in front of people and talk to people, uh, we're going to know more about what's going on just from communication and stuff like this. So I do. I, th I think that we're trying to put ourselves in a good spot. Barney Films 85, you're a bit slow, but you keep going. Uh, tells people that when the pandemic is over, a lot of people will release that they should have saved up more for a rainy day like this, so jobs will be a bit slower. And you know what? I, I think that you're right. Uh, I really think that what's going to happen, <clears throat> and I had this conversation earlier, and guys, I hate to say this, I think college football is probably not going to happen next year. I think that professional football may happen next year. It's, it's going to be crazy because, you know, think about it. 
if we're not getting back to normal till September, October, there's no preseason, there, there's no spring games, there's no no practicing up until that point. And you can't just say, okay, we're good now, everybody jump and start playing football. You've got to have time to work out and get together and get back in shape and practice with your teammates and do things like that. So I think it's going to get really tough before it gets a lot better. Uh, Isaiah 92, good to have you in here. San Bernardino County, California, lots of work. So are they not shutting y'all down any, Isaiah? And I ask that because I, you know, here in Texas we hear that some Californ- some of California is shut down, some of it's not moving, some of it's like New York, like a ghost town. Uh, we've also heard that, you know, we, we've heard New York shutting down. Uh, Seattle, you know, is another one that's been hit really hard. So, and I've got lots of friends there. So, man, that, it's tough to hear. Uh, Derek Morosco, Jimco, PGH, owner from PGHPA, slow but working. Man, I'm glad you're working, brother. Um, and, guys, that, that's the thing is, and Julia and I talked about this earlier, there's a lot of local businesses that, man, this is going to hurt. And I don't remember who it was. I think it was the Texas governor saying that you know, a thousand, and it may have been, uh, Clay Jenkins, the, the Dallas County judge who's kind of taking things over down here. It it's something that he said. He said, you know, a thousand businesses shut down last year, I think is what he said. And he says, I think this year it'll be fifteen thousand. And guys, think about it. Losing fifteen thousand local businesses, that's tough. That's really tough. Uh Mark Medarios, Cedar Hill, Texas. Good to have you in here. Welcome. Barney Films 85, started following Morning Tech Meeting. Got yourself a 30-minute phone call coaching with them, thinking of questions to ask. If Roger wasn't so busy, I could call him. Man, I tell you what, it it is crazy. But, man, it's it's always fun. It's always good. Just, you know, be careful. You never know what people are going to try to sell you. And, you know, there, there was somebody talking about this on LinkedIn. God, it was, it was LinkedIn this morning, as a matter of fact, I think it was. And no, it was yesterday. And this lady was really upset. She said, look, you know, since this pandemic has happened, everybody's come online, everybody's got an online course, and everybody's, you know, selling it for $1,000. And it's like, look, you know, people really need to worry about the money they're spending right now. Watch what's going on. Watch what they're doing. Because, and if you buy an online course right now for $1,000, you got to make sure that you're going to get beyond September, October, if that's how long this thing takes. Uh, so, Barney Films 85, just be careful, brother. Uh, Jonathan R. Yeah, I mean, it's been slow, but there's still work. That's good. Derek Morosco, big project with PGH Water Authority shut down, was booming, removing a lot of lead. And, you know, here's the deal, guys. There's a lot going on right now that maybe we couldn't do because we were so busy. And, you know, I hate to say that, but but think about it. Sometimes we get so busy that we can't remove water from lead. We, we, we can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do things around the house. I made a video the other day about five things that you can do around your house right now while you're locked in. They're easy to do, and they're things that – Man, some of them really need to be done. But, you know, what are we doing right now? And and think about it. While we have an opportunity, we should be home either educating ourselves, educating our, our family or our children, or, you know, taking care of those honeydew lists. And I know nobody wants to do honeydew lists. I don't like doing honeydew lists. But right now, while most of us can't get out and do the things we need to be doing, it's going to be crazy. Drew Tech, they would have to shut down the gas stations to keep people home, and and they may. And see, there's Christina, 20 days. <laughs> I know. Uh, Will says college football isn't going to happen. Don't you put that evil on us. Man, I hate to say it, but, oh, God, it's crazy. And here's the one thing Christina says, and this is really interesting. Believe it or not, homes are still selling. Now, she's in Louisiana, and they are in complete shutdown mode. Um uh, I think the plumbers and people like that are still allowed to be out working, kind of like here. 
But I mean, think about it. People are still buying and selling houses. People are still buying and selling cars. Uh, you, know, you see the ads every morning on the TV show or on the morning news about cars, trucks, 0% interest. We'll give you 83 years to finance it. Well, maybe not that long. But, you know, they're going to give you, God, I think they're up to six or seven years now, seven or eight years. And it's just kind of crazy. But, man, they're, they, they've got to sell cars because they've got to keep people busy too. And, look, I understand it. I see. It is kind of wild. Uh, Isaiah 92, lots of people aren't working, but the essential services are still going. Service plumbers, grocery stores, road work. Now, see, to me, is road work essential right now? And, and I'm not trying to argue with you, but that's the question that I had about the construction is do we really need these people out? And here's why I ask. <clears throat> say say somebody's out, out working on a road crew and they go to the store and they get somebody sick at the store. Say worse than that, somebody at the store gets them sick. Then they turn around and there's an issue at, at home. So they go home. And maybe they don't stop and wash their hands like they should. They go straight in. They pick up their kids. They hug their wife. They do whatever. And this stuff spreads pretty easy, guys. So this is something that we kind of need to look at, need to watch, need to keep an eye on. What can we do to make it better for all of us? And that's what it's going to have. That's what's going to have to happen. Carson Hutchins, how are you? It's going to be hard for me to get an apprentice job in June because of COVID nineteen. You know, Carson. You're right, but here's the thing. I truthfully think that the United Association, PHCC, I think anybody and everybody is going to be altering what they do. They're going to change things up. They're going to say, look, we normally only do this or we normally only bring people in at this time. So there's a lot of things that they're going to do different, and I think you'll be okay because once the work starts, we still need new people. And the unions know it. All construction trades know it. They're not going to just eliminate things. So trust me, I think you'll be okay. Carson, the, the one thing I'll tell you is it's not going to be hard. I think you'll be able to get a job just fine. Uh, Troy Ketchen, how are you? Good to see you. Kawhi Delawal, how close was I? I'm pretty close. How are you doing? Good to have you in here. Sorry about that, guys. Need to go. Get a little sip. And I am doing good. Thank you for asking. Brandon Gamble, everyone is home. Us plumbers are booming. You know, and here's the deal, Brandon, and, and this is something to think about. It's going to be that way for a while until they keep pushing this date back. And think about it. When we went in almost two weeks ago, they said it's going to be two weeks. Now they just pushed it back another month. So now there are going to be some people that have been home for six weeks. And I think things are going to tighten up like that. I mean, our phones here in the last couple of days have literally slowed down a lot. And, and I hate to say it because, I mean, like I said, I've got six employees that I need to keep running, and it's kind of tough. So... They're not just going to go blowing their money, I promise you. Marty Films 85, not buying. You listen to their podcast where they interview a lot of good people, such as Ellen Rohr. They're not pushing sales, and I know better than to throw money at something not worth it. You know, and, and Marty Films 85, good for you, brother. Uh, guys, here's the deal. that There's a lot of people out there on social media right now trying to sell you, look, you've got time to learn. This is how you get rich quick. You know, learn to sell purple widgets on the internet, and you're going to do great. And I hate to tell you, but that is all BS. Number one, if it was that easy to get rich, they wouldn't tell anybody. They just sit at home and keep getting richer. And they all say, oh, no, I just I want to teach other people. <clears throat> Guys, look, the, the only reason I want to teach people social media is I think I figured it out better than a lot of other people. Uh, the only reason I want to teach plumbing is I don't think there's a lot of people out there teaching plumbing the right way. So there's a lot of different things that can be available, but just be careful. And, and that's all I'm saying is, is, look, and a lot of these people that are selling stuff online right now, I know them. I know what they're doing. 
Uh, I know how good or how not so good their product is. So my thing is right now, now watch every dollar that goes out because it may be a while before more comes in, especially if you're in the trades, because it is liable to slow down like we've never seen before. So please be very careful. Uh, Kuala, I don't give anybody my number except Christina. Uh, you can email me. You can connect me through YouTube, but I don't give out my number. But thank you. Uh, Drew Tech, you're still available to work here in Kentucky. You do plumbing and electrical, still getting service calls. You just try to keep extra clean and sanitized and no direct contact with the customers. And Drew Tech, that's a great thing. And, you know, we talked about this last week. You know, we've got the, re the script that we read to tell the customers, look, has anybody traveled? Has anybody been quarantined? Has anybody been self-quarantined? Has anybody felt sick? There's a lot of things that we go through. And, and we try not to do that. You know, we used to have customers sign an iPad. We try not to do that now. Uh, I don't even want my guys taking the credit card from the customer. You know what? Just read the number to me. I'll type it in. We'll call it good. Amber can get signature on file. There's a lot of things that we can do. Oh, Brandon Gamble. Wedding got canceled. Man, I hate to hear that. I really do. <clears throat> That's tough. Derek, your plumbers in Pittsburgh are not booming. Only emergencies. And, guys, that's what it's going to be. Uh, you know, we, we've had some jobs going on that, that we finished up here recently. Uh, thank God we, we fought weather. We fought, I mean, God, we fought weather. We fought all kinds of things. But we've had a lot of rain here lately. And I keep thinking, hey, maybe that's great. That'll wash out some of this. Anything's possible. Julie thinks that when the summer comes along, it's going to get hot, and that's going to help kill it. And I will take anything in the world killing it right now, but I think it's going to be around a while. So, guys, we really do. We've got to keep an eye on it and, man, do the best that we can. Brandon Gamble. Man, I hate to hear that your wedding got canceled. I really do. Uh, have you all started planning it again? Have you started thinking about when? And that's just me asking, man. Freedom guy, would you be able to make it on my own while you're an apprentice? Number one, I'll ask you, where are you at? Uh, what's your cost of living there? Because I've got apprentices that work for me that live on their own. Uh, and I've had other apprentices that lived with me and were on their own. I've had apprentices whenever I was an instructor in the union that they they lived on their own. They supported a family. I don't remember if their wife was working or not. So, I mean, yeah, it can be done. Now, I'll tell you me. I'll tell you my story. When I was young and a plumber, and, and we called them helpers back then, but then again, I wasn't in the union, so they may still call them helpers. But my thing is I had to work two or three jobs because I knew what I needed to support my family. So I was an, a helper during the day learning plumbing. At night, I would literally – I had two different jobs I did. Uh, got back when I was a plumber's helper, I would build fences on the weekends, and then at night there was a place that I worked at that I, I learned how to tend bar. And, man, it was like a big game hall, uh, like a pool hall, something like that. But I learned to tend bar and, and got good at it. So made a lot more money doing that later that was really pretty cool. So anyway, guys, I don't know. It depends on what you need. And, you know, look at it. Right now, Plumber's Apprentices starting out here in the Dallas area start out at about $17 an hour. So that's $34,000 a year. What's it cost you to live? So, Freedom Guy, there you go. In terms of pay, I know what you meant. Uh, would you be able to financially independent as an apprentice? Yeah, and, and man, I think you can. Michael Weldon, Atlanta area, very, very slow last week or two. Uh, yeah, Julie, I hope it's over for September too. You know, here, here's the deal. And, and guys, this, I mean, it just, it, it is what it is. It's going to take a little while. And it's not going to go away overnight. But I think that once they find a cure, once they find a way to slow it down, and I really think they're going to have to lock everybody down and just say, guys, you, you don't go anywhere. And unfortunately, I know that's tough because we still need the grocery stores open, gas stations. 
People still need emergency plumbing, emergency electrical. There's a lot of things people are going to need. God, we had to have the cable guy come out the other day, and that was an emergency. You imagine being locked down? Now lock your butt down with no internet. Man, that'll drive you crazy. Julie threatened to shoot me. I said, look, I'll get a cable guy out here. I promise. Uh, Freedom guy. Okay, thank you so much for replying. You will do what you have to do. You're also in Oklahoma, 21 and single. You know, and here's the deal is, guys, look, it's it's all going to change. And and what I mean by that is we're going to learn so much through this pandemic that we're going to be more prepared for this next time. And I know that sounds wild, but if you look at it and you think about it, we've got to learn from this. We have to learn that, you know, we need meat in the freezer, that we need toilet paper. Uh, you know, my wife laughs at me because I've been saying for years, we, we do the, the bottled water because we like the high alkaline water. And it's not that we have bad water. I've got a whole house water filtration system. Our water's good. But the problem that we have is we both like the high alkaline water. So that's what we, that's what we do it for. We're going to start doing that with food. We're going to start doing it. And I mean, when I say water, guys, I, I got like eight or 10 bottles at home, eight or 10 bottles at work. And that's just the way I am. So the, the crazy thing is, I think we're going to be more ready for this the next time. Because I do think this will happen again. Uh, yeah, Julie, I hope it's over before September 3rd. <clears throat> What is the average cost per opening in your area? And Drew Tack, I don't know what you mean by per opening. Uh, if you're talking an estimate for like new construction, what do you charge per fixture? Or are you talking job opening? Not sure. Will says, I wonder if a lot of people will join recession-proof jobs, like plumbing after all this is over. And you know what, Will? I think that they will. And I saw something posted in one of the plumbing groups on Facebook the other day. It said, guys, look around at the jobs that Washington and the governors are calling essential jobs. Look at those. Because those jobs are going to be essential when this happens again. And if you have a job that is not essential, they're going to find a way to say, look, you need to stay home. And if you're not ready for this, you're not prepared for this, it's going to be tough. Christina Smallhorn, a bidet, get a bidet. You won't need as much toilet paper. And you know, it's funny because, and I got 28 people in here right now. So so I'll tell you this, <clears throat> tomorrow night at seven o'clock central standard time. So that's five o'clock West coast, eight o'clock East coast. I'm a plumber. So it takes a minute. Uh, I'm going to be on a, a channel. And I want y'all to go check out C. Jane Drill. And C. Jane Drill, Jane teaches people how to, the channel, teaches people how to do things around the house themselves. And it's a good channel. They've got a neat thing going on. C. Jane Drill has been around for years. Uh, The channel is actually huge. Uh, I think she's got half a million subscribers. But Leah reached out to me and said, hey, I've got a lot of people asking about plumbing now. Will you do a live stream with me tomorrow night? So tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, I'm going to be on CJ Drill. And guys, if y'all have time and y'all can remember, that's what I'm saying. You may want to go over there and subscribe. That way you at least get a notification tomorrow. But I'm going to go in there with her tomorrow night. We're going to go for about 45 minutes. Uh, she asked me if I would talk for about 30 minutes, answer a few questions, and then she'll talk about how to get in touch with people and do this and that. But I thought that was pretty cool. So I said, absolutely. I would love to help you out. So I'm looking forward to that. Barney Films 85. If you're revising your many statements that in your area, plumbers will be making a hundred an hour in five years. This must slow down the economy enough for those five years to now take longer. And you, you know what? 
Barney Films 85, it's a possibility. I don't know that, I mean, think about it. I don't know that plumbers are going to take pay cuts. Uh, and, and let me be very morbid here. The, the, the pandemic is hitting mainly older people. What if we lose more plumbers at a faster rate now? And don't get me wrong, I hope not. But is it a possibility? And are more people going to get into plumbing faster? I hope so, because we need them. Uh, this may change a lot of things, and you're right, and it's, it's a great point. Uh, I mean, I love that you, you asked that, because I truthfully think that we're still going to have a need for plumbers. I don't think that we're going to have so many people get in that just all of a sudden, gee, all the plumbing jobs are full. We have nothing to worry about. Not in five years. In 10 years, it's a possibility. But it's going to be because a lot of people looked around right now and said, you know what? I want to become a plumber because those guys kept working. So I don't know. It's very interesting. It's a great point. And, look, I have no problem backing up and changing anything that I ever say. When, when things change, I, I'm smart enough to say, hey, I got to change too. So, Christina, the bidet. Look, I've got a bidet toilet seat. Uh, and I'm going to tell you all what, it's my favorite one. And what I mean is <laughs> the bidet toilet seat is in the powder bathroom, and I will get up out of our bedroom. Now, my wife still mainly uses the master bath, but I'll get out and go to the other one. And the reason we installed it in there there's an electrical outlet close enough to use. Tell me I ain't smart. Deontay Richardson, if you get into the union apprenticeship as a plumber, is it possible you could learn residential plumbing? You know, Deontay, that's another great question. And, and the reason I say that is here in Dallas, no. Uh, yeah, here I am, a union company, go figure. So here in Dallas, if... If I bring in an apprentice that I want to work with me or I bring in an apprentice that has residential service experience, it's real easy for me to get them into the union. But the problem is all the union in Dallas does is teach them commercial. Uh, my guys don't learn a whole lot that will help them with me as a residential company. Now, the tough thing about it is there are unions across the United States that do train service. I think Milwaukee and Chicago probably have two of the best. So it's kind of interesting, but it's possible. It's just it's going to depend on what local you're getting into, when you get in. My local has been telling me for four years they're building a service training center. It's just still not here yet. Derek Morasco. Maybe soon there will be a lot of mainline clogs if people start using all the toilet paper and wipes. And, Derek, I, I think you're right. Uh, I think that it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen soon. I think the clogged up drains. The, here, here's the problem, and y'all can go look and see fatbergs uh, and go look them up. And what they are, it's like an iceberg that's in your city sewer. And it is a buildup of grease baby wipes, condoms, feminine products, paper towels, anything people are flushing down the drains, it all builds up. And, guys, they found one in London that was, like, I think as big as seven of those double-decker buses, and it almost shut down their sewer system. And I think that's what's going to happen is during this, and, and I know about this, and I know it's crazy, I had a company from New York reach out to me and ask me if I would do a TV special with them about that. They said, would you be willing to go to London, Milwaukee, New York, Houston? They named off a few different places. They said, would you be willing to go there, get down in the sewers and look at these things or talk about them and see what was going on? I'm like, oh, heck yeah. And I, I'll, I'll climb in sewers anywhere. It don't bother me. I'm, I got broad shoulders and a big butt. The great Amber Mendoza. So thankful plumbers are still able to help everyone stay comfortable in their homes during this time. Thank you and internet to Julie. Absolutely. You know, Amber's my call center girl. Uh, so if you call up here to the plumbing company, you get to talk to Amber. She's phenomenal. Or Julie, one of the two. Uh, but here's the thing, guys, is, you know, we've got to stay busy to keep Amber and everybody else working. 
So I understand that. And that's why I say people, look, be careful, keep your eyes open, see what's happening, and be prepared for it because I think it's going to change. We'll put a link in here. Will, thank you so much. Uh, so we'll put a link in here to see Jane Drill. Guys, click on that. Go over, check out her channel, subscribe. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, man, come in there. Tell her how amazing it is to have me on there. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty interesting. I got to meet her in L.A. back in October when I was there for Vid Summit. So meeting her, hanging out with her, getting to visit uh, was pretty neat. Smart lady. Uh, used to be in the union and trades. I don't remember if she was a wood woodworker or an iron worker. I don't remember what it was. But, man, a smart lady. She knows what's going on. She started doing YouTube a long time ago. And like I said, she's got over half a million subscribers. So her channel's good, and she's doing some good things. Uh, Nico Nico, same. You got a bidet shower, very cheap and very easy to install, except for the blow fill valve tank like you got in the U.S. You'll need a little copper job. To set up a valve. And Nico, here, here's my deal. I've got the the American Standard Spalette toilet seat. And it's literally just a toilet seat you attach to any toilet. Uh, and I say any. I think there's one or two that have maybe two rounds of a front of a tank that it won't work with. But I tell you what, man, I love my bidet Spalette toilet seat. It works. I've got a video on it on how to install it. <clears throat> And I did it here at the shop, so I did it just on a round front toilet, and it's an elongated seat, and I've had people say, dude, that was stupid. And I understand. Look, I'm just trying to show you how to install it. But Will and I are talking. We need to. We may shoot that video tomorrow. We've got things that we need to do, so that may be one that works out. Ethan Varghese, Varghese, your closest union company is almost an hour away. Is the union the best way to learn the trade for beginner or is non-union okay? You know, Ethan, and that's a great question. And, and here's the deal is, look, I came up open shop, meaning non-union. So for the first 17 years of my plumbing career, it was non-union. Uh, I think the training now is probably better in the union, although – there are some open shop companies that are involved with PHCC. And I'm telling you what, I know a lot of people at PHCC. It's a phenomenal organization, and they do some great training. And actually, one of my apprentices actually looked at their syllabus and said, look, I think I'd rather do PHCC than the union. So here's my thing. Luckily for me, I learned from two of the best plumbers I think I've ever worked with, and they were open shop. And they were smart. They taught you to do things right, and they drilled it into you. And even their dad, I used to love working with him because, I mean, he would ask you plumbing questions almost all day, every day. And it was just to make sure you knew what you were doing, you knew what was going on, and, man, he was great. I joined the union in 97, and I learned that they learn a different way. And what I mean is, you know, they're taught a different way. They are taught numbers and how to lay things out. You know, I'm an old school plumber, man. I can hold up two 45s, a tape measure, and tell you how long the piece is to cut. And, man, I'm, I'm going to get it. Uh, I've done it for too long. I know how to do it. Have I messed up before? Absolutely. But you know what? I've seen... Union plumbers mess up because they did the math wrong. And there's a lot of different things, but it's neat to walk into the union training center and learn there's a different way to do it. And it's funny because I remember the vice president for the first company I worked for in the union, he laughed because I went in. I said, hey, look, man, I got a great idea. I had already proven myself, so they knew I was going to work hard. I said, I want to join the union as a pipe fitter. Because I want to learn pipe fitting, but I want to work during the day as a plumber. And he said, man, they are not going to let you go to the apprentice training center at night as a pipe fitter. So they never let that happen, but I ended up going down there later and became a teacher, an instructor, so that I was teaching pipe fitters and plumbers and welders. So I think the training is really good in the union, but I also know that there are a lot of open shop training centers. 
whether it's PHCC or, or CEF or some different places, there's other ways to learn. And you know what? If you got with the most amazing plumber out there and worked with him for five years, you turn out to be a pretty daggum plumber. Now, for employee-wise, I think being in the union is good for you. I think it's really it's probably better than open shop because there's different type benefits. You have an insurance plan. You have a pension plan. Uh, I invest into my guy's 401k plan. So there's a lot of different benefits that maybe most open shop companies don't have. But in the long run, I really think for an employee, the union is great. For an employer, eh, not so much. But it is what it is. So, and it jumped on me again. Let me scroll up a little bit. Brendan Munson, your company laid off 30 techs. You made the cut. Good for you. Uh, now they're asking us to be available seven days a week. You're making more money, oddly, <laughs> but you're starting to worry about yourself getting sick. And, and Brendan, that's the thing is, you know, and we talked to our guys about it up here. What are we doing when we walk in houses? What are we doing when we're at the supply house? Uh, you know, the supply houses here in Dallas now, basically it's a, it's a call in order. You can go in, but you're, you're going to be six or eight feet away from the counter. They're doing everything they can to take care of their employees, just like we are. But we all need to be taking care of our employees. So that really is a huge deal. And you say that you're worried about yourself getting sick, Brandon. Let me ask you this. Are you wearing a face mask? Are you wearing booties? Are you wearing gloves? Do you have hand sanitizer? Do you have a spray with water and alcohol? What kind of things are you doing to take care of yourself? And is it happening? Okay, so Drew Tack, you're talking about opening fixtures for new construction. And if I'm not mistaken, last time I talked to somebody, they were about $2,500 a fixture. I'd be lying to you if I told you that's how I did estimates or anything. I've always gone through taking off footage, done the labor formulas, and done everything that way. So I've never really done it by fixture. I've kind of pulled some ballpark numbers out of my butt that way, but that's about it. Uh... Aaron R. Peck Supply, PVC Drain, Waste Vent, Aluminum Wiring, Sad, Sad Copper Thief. Boy, isn't that the truth. And Copper Thieves will kill you. Christina Smallhorn loves her bidet. Guys, I'm telling you, if, you have, if you're in here and you're a plumber and you have not invested in a bidet toilet seat, man, you do not know what you're missing. Waverly. Do you have to be a master plumber to work med gas or can a journeyman work under a master plumber helping with med gas? Uh, Waverly, tell me this. Are you in Texas? Because what I'm going to tell you is what the Texas laws are. To sell plumbing work, there has to be a master med gas plumber. I am. Uh, luckily for me, I've got every endorsement in Texas. Med gas, uh, I've got the master med gas, the master WSPS, which is water supply protection, and the Master uh, Multipurpose Residential Fire Protection Supply Specialist. So I can sell any plumbing work in Texas, except septic tanks, installation, and piping on the other side. I can do anything up to a septic tank. I can install grease waste and anything outside of it, but not septic. So, yes, you have to have... You don't have to be a master to work on MedGas. You have to be a journeyman with a MedGas endorsement in Texas. But in order to work on the system, you have to work at a company that has a master, master MedGas, and they are registered to do that work. And see, Christina's bidet's in the hall bath as well, so I get it. And to me, it's worth the walk. I don't have to have it in the master bedroom. I don't mind walking out the door and around the corner to get to it. Okay, Deontay. You have a buddy who has his own business, and he is a part of the union, and he does it all pretty much, but mostly residential. He may request me as an apprentice if I get in the union. Yeah, I think here's normally how that works. You would want him to send you down to the union. And, and I say that because based on Dallas here, since my union does not train service, I can hire anybody I want a plumber or an apprentice, and send them to the union and say, hey, I'm hiring this guy. Uh, he's got experience. So it's easy for me to bring people into the union. And the good thing is 
since I do service and they don't supply service for journeyman, I can call them key personnel and literally pretty much get them covered on insurance. I can get them signed up in the union immediately. They don't have to go through a waiting period, but also as a, a company owner, since our union doesn't train service, I can bring in guys up to six months as an evaluationary period, meaning I can bring you in for six months, see how you're doing, see if you're good enough to put in a truck by yourself, see what I want to do, and go from it that way. So there, there's a lot of different options there. Uh, but med gas, yeah, you have got to be – sorry about that. I jumped down. That was the last one. So, yes, Deontay. He can hire you. He can bring you in. Or if you go down and talk to the union to sign up there, you might be able to say, hey, look, Fred brought me in. I'd really like to go to work for him. And they may allow it. They may not. Kevin Drake Fitness, good to see you in here. Friend at work, bought you a stupid energy drink, and you almost passed out digging a base. You know, I'll tell you what. And when I worked out at the airport, and I was out at DFW Airport for about five years, Literally, they had two guys drop out, and the general contractor, which was a joint venture group, but they made it part of the safety deal. You weren't allowed to have energy drinks at work. That was the reason. See, Julie's got a honeydew list for me. Man, I am in trouble. <clears throat> Derek, first time on chat. Great channel, and must be, and must be good luck. Just got called out. Emergency clog. Got to go. Be safe and God bless. God bless you, brother. Be safe out there. And, you know, that's the thing, guys. Look, make sure that we're all taking care of ourselves. Make sure that we're taking care of each other. But at the end of the day, too, make sure you're taking care of yourself. Are you wearing dust masks? And I don't mean masks. I mean N95s. Can you get them? I mean, that's the tough question is right now kind of getting them's hard. Uh, are you wearing gloves? Are you not touching your eyes, touching your nose, touching your mouth? Are you not doing things that are going to lead to problems later? Does my body get used to the heat? Man, my body, it, it doesn't bother it. But then again, I was like, I've been here my whole life. Uh, I remember when I was a kid walking down to the pool, and it was 113 degrees outside, and we went down to the city pool. And, I mean, for some reason, I remember that day. And I know why I remember it, because I thought, man, it's hot out here. But once I got to the pool, I forgot all about it. So, yeah, you do get used to it. Southern Mama Drama, good to have you back in here again. Have you used the new Milwaukee cast iron pipe cutter, the Pro Press add-on adapter? You know what? I have not. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen the, the wrapper on chain where it squeezes it and pops it, and I like that. I'll tell you what I did just the other day, and I think we put that video up today. The, the M18 fuel, the pipe threader, oh, my gosh. I had a job about 30 minutes from here. Went up, carried some pipe, carried some fittings, carried some nipples. I, I, knew, what I, I knew part of what I was going to need. Uh, so I carried a bunch of that with me, but I carried that M18 fuel pipe threader. I carried the, the cheapest tripod I had because it was the only one back there. And, I mean, this tripod, it's, it's got rubber grips on it, so it doesn't hold right. There's a lot of problems. But this M18 Fuel pipe threader has a guide tool or a bracket that you clamp onto the pipe so it literally leverages itself against the pipe. Amazing. Now, I felt bad because I only had to do one thread. But, man, I was in and out of that job, got it knocked out, got it done. It was fantastic. So I haven't tried the cutter. But I tell you what, the the Milwaukee M18 fuel cutters or, or threaders and stuff like that, just that M18 fuel package, man, I want the whole big package. That thing is cool. They got, I think it's 11, 1200 bucks. And I think there's like six or eight tools in it. Man, that thing looks sharp. Christina Smallhorns only drank one energy drink in your lifetime. You know what, Christina? I get it. Uh, and I hate to say it, but. Back whenever I was in the field, whenever I was doing QAQC, man, I would drink like six or eight monsters a day. And I drank the blue monster because I was going low carb. But man, I'm telling you, it it was tough to get off of. It was kind of crazy. Shandy Friedman, how are you doing? Good to have you in here. 
hope I pronounced your first name right, Shandy Friedman. Uh, anyway, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Southern Mama Drama says, Julie Wakefield, plug. You've been using Julie's networking techniques, and they've been working well. Okay, now you call those her techniques. Let me tell you what. You know, those are just as much mine as hers. Not really. I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, you know, the, the cool thing about it is, is, guys, there's, you know, Julie and I teach networking. We, we talk about it. I am actually, it's funny, I was in here earlier today shooting a video for the uh, Online Pizza Summit 2020. And I know right now y'all are thinking, wait, why are they having a plumber speak at a pizza summit? And they're doing it because of what we're doing right here. What we do on YouTube and LinkedIn to grow ourselves locally. <clears throat> and we call it social local growth. And we have literally... We have figured out how to use YouTube, how to use LinkedIn to help build our community, help build our tribe. And it works. And people laugh at me about it because they're like, wait, you're, you're speaking at a pizza summit? It's like, no, I'm not speaking at it. They asked me to speak at it. So it's not just that. I'm now having social media people reach out to me and say, hey, look, will you talk about LinkedIn? Will you talk about YouTube? Will you talk about the way you and the things you're doing. And guys, I got to tell you, I love what I'm doing because I think I'm going to be able to help a lot of plumbers, electricians, roofers, all kinds of people learn that, look, social media is something we can all learn to do. We can learn to do it well, and, and we can learn to do it different. And, man, we can make a good living at it, and we can get off Google. Uh, and, look, I have nothing at all against Google. Hey, hold on one second. Give me about one second. All right, I, Will's leaving, so I wanted to holler at him before I left just to uh, see if he had heard anything from the guys. I keep looking at my phone, but I haven't seen anything yet. Uh, so right now I'm assuming everything's okay. At least they're not calling me, screaming, and yelling. Uh, man, I'm sorry. That just hit me as funny. I look down, and Nico Nico says, do you know how Japanese do plumbing? Well, I'll tell you what I do know. I know that water goes downhill, and don't bite your fingernails. Now, man, I don't know what they payday is over there, so I can't tell you that. But, you know, Nico, Nico, I don't. Uh, and that, that it's really neat because y'all have heard me talking here, and, and I norm normally preface a lot of my answers with, okay, look, here in Texas, here's what we do. And here's why. I've had people get mad at me because – when I talk about uh, shutting off your water at the meter, a lot of people get mad and say, hey, look, we're in New York, and they don't want you to touch the meter. You've got to call the city. And here's my thought process is, you know, hey, guys, look, if my house is flooding and I know how to turn the water off, I'm going to turn it off. You want to get mad at me? You want to find me? Do whatever you want to do. But if I can shut the water off, and keep from flooding my house and keep from causing problems like that, absolutely, I'm going to shut it off. So why wouldn't I? So now whenever I answer questions for people, I'm always like, look, where do you live? What part of the world are you in? Because here in Texas, here's how it is. And don't get me wrong. I, I know that we don't do things just like everybody else. I know everybody else doesn't do things just like we do it. But, man, at the end of the day, all I can tell you is what I learned, what, what I've learned growing up, what I've learned in the last 40 years of plumbing, and just say, hey, look, we're, we're man, we're all doing good. We're making water run downhill, and it's working. Southern Mama Drama. What hourly rate do plumbers charge in Austin? In Charlotte, you charge between 200 and 250 You know, that's a, it's a good question. And it's a tough one to answer because let's just say Dallas because uh, that's where I'm at. But Austin is identical. There are plumbing companies in Dallas that charge $90 an hour. There are plumbing companies in Dallas that charge $450 an hour. And, and I know this because I've seen a lot of the price books where I've talked to them. 
the ones that charge $95 an hour say, hey, look, it, I'm, I'm making money. I'm doing good. And I know them. They are. But they own their own building. They, they, they do a lot of things. They're, they're non-union. They do a lot of things right. <laughs> That's a good one, Joe. Uh, they do a lot of things right that are very efficient, and their service area is small and tight, so they don't have to travel a lot. So his plumbers can get six or seven calls a day in. Where me, I've got a much bigger service area. My plumbers normally get about four a day in because we've got about 50% drive time. So there's a big delta there, and I'm union. So for me to make money as a company owner, I've got to charge more. So it's really hard to tell you what the rate is because it's going to be different per company. But here's what I tell people all the time is don't set your rate based on what other people are charging. Because say you went in and saw my buddy that, that's charging the $95 an hour. Chances are you're going to charge that and you're going to lose money because you're going to have a bigger service area. You're going to have people that aren't as efficient. You're going to have trucks that aren't stocked as well. So the guys are going to have to run to Home Depot or the supply house. There's a lot of different things that get factored in when you're looking at that. Now say that you charge 375 or 400 an hour, but you don't believe in that. It's going to be hard to sell. When you look at somebody and you got to tell them a water heater is $2,500, you're like, uh, now I'm like, uh, that, that, that water heater is going to be $2,500. And, and you start cringing and, you know, kind of leaning away because you think you're going to get hit. I mean, I know plumbers here in Dallas that their monthly sales are, are $100,000 a month. That's twenty five grand a week. That's $5,000 a day. But they believe in what they're selling. And they walk in and they're like, look, I'm going to do it better than anybody else. And that's what you're paying for. I'm going to use the best materials. I'm going to use the do it the right way. And I'm the best plumber you're ever going to get. And that's the attitude they walk in with. And no, it's not me. But I've talked to him and I understand how he believes that. And, and you know what? He makes it work well. And, man, I'd, I'd take 10 of him because he's going to walk in and he's going to – it's not what you charge a customer. It's what value they feel they get out of it. And, you know, imagine if you walk in and try and sell a water heater to somebody for $2,500. And you're thinking, man, I just don't believe in this. They're going to be able to see it in your eyes. But what if you walked in and sold them that water heater for $2,500 and you believe that was the greatest thing on earth and it's the best deal they're ever going to get and they buy it and they've never had hot water before, you're their new best friend. So it's what value you bring. How do you sell the value to your customers? And that part, my friends, is huge. Okay, Joe, I'm going to come back to this because I love it. Uh, hey, Roger, thoughts about having to take a dump at a customer's house? I got to tell you, Joe, I've never done it. Uh, that would be tough for me to do. I would probably leave and go somewhere else. Uh, I know plumbers that have carried a five-gallon bucket in their van for that reason. Uh, a five-gallon bucket, baby wipes, spray bottle, what, whatever it is you need. So, and I, I used to carry the Gatorade bottles uh, for when I had to take a leak. I could go out and open the back doors and climb up in between them and squeeze the doors tight on me. I try not to ever use the plumbing in a customer's house. Probably can't say I've never done it, but I know I've never taken a dump. I'm pretty private about that. But it's a good question. Nico, Nico, can you check Japanese plumbing videos? They only use CPVC. And shark bite. Man, number one, uh, we hardly ever use CPVC unless we're popping hot water for some reason. And me and my guys never use shark bite. I know that some people do. Uh, we also only, we would only use shark bite in case of an emergency. So that's something that we could look at and say, hey, this might be a possibility, but hopefully it's something we never have to do. Uh, Joe, uh, I had to do it today and the customer looked at me like a disgusting pig when I exited her bathroom, man, I believe it. 
Um, man, that's a tough one, brother. Where are you located at? I want to call your customer and interviewer. That'd be funny. Uh, that's funny. Uh, Nico, Nico, but their own shark bite. It looks more reliable because they got two O rings. Okay, and you know what, Nico, Nico, look. I, it's not that I have anything against shark bite. Uh, the company's probably good. I've met some people at it. Seem like really good people. My thing is, we have gone back and fixed too many leaks, and it's leaks behind plumbers. It's leaks behind handymen. It's leaks behind homeowners doing it themselves. And everybody tells me, look, shark bass don't leak if you put them in right. That's great. Then spend more time educating the public how to put them in right. Get them approved by the, the local cities to where the city code says, hey, look, we allow shark bite under a slab. It's no problem. Yada, yada, yada. Guys, I just don't believe in it because I have fixed too many leaks. And the plumbers that call me old school and say, man, you're just a dinosaur. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I do know what I'm talking about because I own a residential service company. And we go back and fix leaks. So, yeah, I do. Deontay Richardson, thanks so much, Roger. You really appreciate all the knowledge and info about plumbing. At first, you were kind of hesitant, but watching your videos helped me and reassured me this is what I want. Man, I love that. Uh, and Deontay, look, I have a lot of people reach out to me. And, and you know, they'll the leave comments and videos. And, man, here lately I've been slammed. So I know I hadn't been getting back to them like I should have. Uh, but... You know, a lot of times people go in and leave comments and ask questions, and I really try to get back and help. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Like I said here lately, it's been wild, but I think it's going to slow down. I'm going to have a little more time to do that. Deontay, if there's ever anything that I can do to help, please let me know. I do love helping people get into the trades. I think the trades are great for people. It gives them an option of having a wonderful living without having to go to college, and I got to tell you, I didn't go to college, and, and I love what I do, and I've always made a pretty good living at it. Now, remember, I told you in the beginning, when I first started, I had to, and I had to go in and work extra jobs, but I knew what money I needed for my family to have the living that I was trying to give them at the time. So if you want to do anything bad enough, you'll find a way. So thank you, Deontay. I appreciate it. Zachary Kent, hello. You are currently finishing up your first year of an applied science degree in plumbing and heating. I am hoping to land a job for the summer considering the current way of things. Uh, do you think it will be more difficult to get that job? I got to tell you, Zachary, uh, you know, I almost want to say yeah, but, but here's the thing is, You know, you're going to get a lot of plumbers that don't want to work, that don't want to do this right now. They want to be home. They want to be safe. They want to be with their families. And, look, I understand that. The thing is, you know, the, the world's still going to keep moving. And people are still going to keep having plumbing problems. And, unfortunately, I think a lot of plumbers and plumbing apprentices are going to end up getting laid off. I also think there's going to be a lot of plumbing companies shut down. And I hate to say that, but I think it's true. So my thing is what I would do is don't give up. Keep looking. Start reaching out to the companies now. And, and you can go through and take that free mini course I got where I ask what kind of plumber do you want to be. It's in one of my videos. But what I would say is, look, don't give up. Start looking now. And even reach out to companies and say, look, I, I know it's not time right now, and I, I know things are crazy right now, but this summer I want to get a job, and I'm really hoping to get one with you. And, man, maybe it'll all work out. I hope that it does. Robert Sollers, bucket in the back of the truck. So much shame afterwards. You know what, Robert? If you get a lid for it or maybe carry some saran wrap or something like that, man, there's always a way around it, but I think I'd rather – have the shame of having to go in the bucket in the truck than have to walk out of somebody's bathroom and look at a customer knowing I just dropped a bomb. So that's the way I look at it. Uh, good question here. Southern Mama Drama. What would you do differently in your plumbing career if you could go back and change things? I love the fact that I have started learning more about plumbing 
in the last, I'm going to say 10 to 15 years. But one thing that I think that I would do is I would start working for myself a lot sooner. I love working for myself because I'm getting to do a plumbing company the way I want to do it. And don't get me wrong, we have almost failed. We've almost gone bankrupt. We have, man, we have refinanced the house. We've done a lot of different things to keep us going. And, and guys, I'll tell you right now, this stuff isn't easy. Uh, when you know you've got two, three, four, five, you know, six families supporting through a plumbing company, it, it's tough because you're like, okay, look, we need to keep all six of these families busy, working, fed, clothed, kids with toys, whatever it is. So it really is a big deal. And Julie and I take it personal. Uh, it's it's a lot of work. And e even during this, it's like, look, how can we keep everybody? How can we keep everybody going? How can we keep everybody fed? How can we keep everything going on and make life amazing for everybody? So that's what we're looking at. And, and it ain't always easy. It's, it's kind of tough, but it's what we got to deal with right now. And we're going to find a way to do it. Uh, Robert Sollers. Okay, so what would I change? Let me go back to that. I would get more educated sooner, meaning I would understand there's a lot I don't know. I knew that I didn't know how to run a business, but I really didn't know it for sure until I opened up a business. That would be number one. You need coaches for everything. You need business coaches. You need financial coaches. You need mental coaches. You need marriage coaches. Sometimes you need plumbing coaches. Uh, I luckily had a lot of experience. I had, what, almost 35 years experience when I started my own company. I've, I'm lucky because I've done new construction. I've done service. I've done residential. I've done commercial. I've been non-union. I've been union. So I understand all of it, and I can communicate with anybody about any of it. But I think the thing that I would have done is I would have opened my company sooner. Uh, I've got friends that own their own companies and have for a long time, and they're doing great. And, and man, God bless them. I, I love what they're doing. I love their attitude. I love the fact that they did it. They did it when they did. They stuck with it, and they've made a great name. Me, I'm going to do things a little bit different. Uh, I'm more of a high-end plumbing company. I specialize in things that a lot of other plumbing companies don't want to do. Slab leaks, leak detection, slab leak repair. There's a lot of things there that a lot of plumbing companies are like, look, we don't want to do that. We're not going to do that. But, man, we just got good at it and, and spent a lot of money on equipment and spent a lot of money getting good at it. So, anyway, what would I change? I would probably try to build my company sooner. I mean, here I am, 56. I'm five years into it. So I need to get this thing going or, or figure out what I'm going to do and go from there. But I do love it. Robert Sollers hung 160 feet of two-inch Schedule 80 PVC for the first time today in a commercial lab. Good for you. And I tell you what, I, I love – I love commercial work. I, I got to tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Did it for many, many years. And the, the the neatest thing about it is it's a whole different world. And it's, you know, residential service and commercial construction are two completely different worlds. And luckily, I've done it all so I can talk about both of it. Jack's Plumbing Videos. Message is gone. Nico Nico. You're very open mind on plumbing, but if you have to choose, you'd rather work with copper. Your UK bender, 15, 20, 10 flux sandpaper, clean it with aluminum sponge and mirror. You know, and Nico, Nico, look, everybody loves different things. Uh, what you're talking about with copper, I could do the same thing with cast iron. I used to do commercial work, roughed it in. Letters turn the same way. Bands turn the same way. Everything torqued down tight, anchored, secure, looked beautiful and then come back into the water right behind it so you can make anything you do look good if you're willing to work hard enough and try hard enough and take that pride in your work and that's one thing that I man I talk to people about all the time is look take pride in what you do it'll stay with you forever uh Jack's plumbing videos is it good to be a plumber man if you're doing plumbing videos and you're not sure brother come on I love being a plumber. 
I think being a plumber is one of the coolest things. I just, I do. I've always loved it. Uh, and I think I knew it because, you know, I quit school my junior year. Last half of my junior year, I was plumbing, plumbed over the summer. But then I went back and graduated with my class. And I got to tell you, one of the coolest things about going back is I think I knew then I want to be a plumber. Uh, but I do. I love it. And I love all different aspects of it. And that's why if, if you go through my mini course and I ask people, you know, do you want to do residential or commercial? Do you want to do service or new construction? Do you want to be union or non-union? And there's a million things that I ask there. But the whole purpose of it is I didn't know all that when I started. I knew I wanted to be a plumber. Now, I had done a remodel, commercial, so I knew about it. The whole big thing about it, though, nowadays I ask people those questions to help find them a position they might like to do before they ever start. If I wouldn't have liked commercial and construction, I'd have hated plumbing, and I'd have never got back into it. Luckily for me, I did, but I learned more about it later, and, man, it was just it was really neat. It just it helped me grow and expand my knowledge, so I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, so, yeah, man, I think it's great to be a plumber, not just good. I think it's great. Uh, Zachary Kent, you're more than welcome. Brandon Cox is in Omaha, Nebraska, where you have a coronavirus construction boom. So, man, explain what you mean by that. <clears throat> are the construction jobs still going? Are they stopped? Are, man, are y'all just construction workers are the only ones allowed to work, so everybody's becoming a construction worker now? You know what? It's, it's funny. Uh, Southern Mama Drama, here's the deal. I've always believed in the culture of, look, we want to do things right. We want to do things better than other companies. And, you know, we, we wear nice clothes. We wear uniforms. Uh, we wear booties. We wear gloves. We take care of people's houses. We use iPads. We use price books. We believe in training. And there's just a million different things that man, we, we, we always come around and do. And our culture is, and, and this is probably the best way to put it, is I tell my guys every job they go on, you treat it like it's your mother or your grandmother. And you look at that job and say, okay, if this was my mom, here's what I would recommend. And I'll even tell that to customers. I'll say, look, I just want to let you know, here's what I would do. Here's how I would do it. And that's a big deal to me because I think that that's very important that we look at it that way. If we're 100% honest with our customers and we treat them like they're family, it's huge. And if I can pass that on to the guys that work for me, man, my life's going to be amazing because it's going to make things run so smooth here. It's when you get in that plumber that he doesn't care about what your culture is. He wants to do his own thing. He's going to cheat. He's going to BS people. He's going to do that. I hate it, but unfortunately, I've had them here. And believe it or not, I couldn't get rid of them quick enough. And then you got to fight workman's comp saying, well, you didn't have a good reason to lay them off. I laid them off because they sucked. And that's it. So unfortunately, and sometimes that's what it is. And I hate to be that way, but God is the truth. Uh... Sam Ham, was the master plumber's test the hardest thing you've ever done in plumbing? You know, I want to say yeah, but the, the first thing that popped into my head was no. In plumbing, I became a lead AP, which is leadership in energy and environmental design. The AP stands for accredited professional. And I got to tell you, that one almost whooped me. Uh, the master's exam, by the time I took my master's, I knew plumbing. I knew it very well. Uh, the only one I think I really worried about was the master med gas because I knew I had to make two solder joints both ways. And I think it cost you 75 or 150 bucks to solder again if you busted. Uh, and I probably really didn't have the money at the time. But, man, I'm, I'm telling you, once you understand plumbing and you, you learn to use the, the study guides and code books, it all becomes easy. Kevin Drake Fitness, your company is doing really good. You're actually looking for more plumbers. Uh, we took over another company. Good for you. 
work because they kept screwing up over the years. So they hired us and we kept getting more work. Fantastic. Good for you, man. Nintendo 64, best part of plumbing is playing in the mud. And you know what? It's funny because I, I have said that so many times. You know, when we're little, our mom tells us not to play in the mud. Now that we're older, we get paid to play in the mud. And I got to tell you, I'm kind of like you. I enjoy it. Playing in the mud doesn't bother me at all. Now, e even tunneling up under a house, getting down in there and getting wet and getting muddy and sliding around in there is a lot of different problems. But but the thing is, at the end of the day, look, I have fun. And, you know, he asked me earlier, you know, do you like plumbing? Man, I love plumbing. Uh, I love being able to walk in. And I think that's what I like about residential service end of it. I get to walk in and visit the customer and talk to them and make their life better. And to me, it doesn't get any better than that. It, it's a great opportunity and a great way to help people. And if you're building your culture right and you're doing things right, man, you've got a wonderful opportunity to really do something good for the community. So I love that. So, man, you're right. Playing in the mud is amazing. Jack's plumbing video. How do you not get the coronavirus when working at a sick client's house? Number one, if they've been sick, if they've been quarantined or something, we may not go. We ask about it because I don't want my guys in there. Uh, about the only thing you could do would be wear a respirator, wear a mask or goggles, wear gloves, wear booties, wear anything you can. And then as soon as you get out of there, burn everything. Uh, you've, you've got to find a way to wash and make sure you don't touch anything you've got to your body, to your eyes, to your mouth, to anything where you could possibly get it. So we ask people now if they're sick, if they have been sick, if they have been quarantined, anything like that. And, and we take it pretty serious. Expertise 10. How do you feel when a homeowner tells you he or she succeeded with a plumbing project issue after watching, viewing one of your YouTube videos. I got to tell you, man, I love that. And guys, you can go back and look at some of my videos and read some of the comments because the videos where I teach homeowners, I mean, I've had grandparents that, that say, look, I'm in my seventies and you taught me how to fix a toilet and I couldn't afford the plumber. So my thing is, look, are there plumbers out there that are going to get mad at me because I taught somebody on welfare how, how to fix their toilet? Yeah, they do. And I get those comments too. And you know what? I feel sorry for those people. But one of the, one of the comments that I got one time, and guys, I mean, brought tears to my eyes. It literally, it was a guy who said he lived in a mo mobile home. And there had been a leak under it. And by the time he got him out there to fix the leak, by the time that the, the community or whoever, whoever came to fix the leak, by the time they did, his house had shifted and his water heater had moved or, or, or something had happened. And he sent me a message and said, look, through your video, I learned how to replace my boiler assembly. And had it not been for your video, I wouldn't have been able to do it because I can't afford it. He says, so not only now do I have water, but I have hot water. And I think he said he hadn't had hot water for six months. And, man, if you can do things like that, why wouldn't you? Because I love helping people. To me, that is the most gratifying part of the job is knowing that, that I helped somebody do something. And it was somebody that really needed the help. Don't get me wrong. Handyman, watch my videos and, and go sell my work to somebody else. Okay, that doesn't bother me. Legally, should they do it? No. But my thing is, look. If I put that video out and I can help a homeowner, man, I'm all over it. I think that part makes it all worthwhile. Mm. Sam Ham, your boss, gets really hot when he finds out his bids that we don't win and get awarded to unlicensed guys. Do you get the same way? Absolutely. Why shouldn't all journeymen be unlicensed shops? Well, and here's the deal. Why shouldn't all journeymen be unlicensed? shops Here, here's the deal is to be honest it, here in texas you can't have a shop if you're not a master now do people do it do people sell work absolutely and if they ever get caught i think they ought to get fried 
They ought to get burned. They ought to take away their license. They ought to take away their drivers. I mean, there's so many things I think they ought to do because you are literally breaking the law intentionally on purpose on a daily basis. And the thing is, you can really, in plumbing, you can put people's lives at risk. Not just that family, but people in the community. And do I think that's right? No, I don't. Now, I understand, man, people got to make a living. But look, go to school and learn it just like the rest of us did. And you say, well, you know, I can't afford to now. I'll make so much money as a handyman. You know what? Great. I could have become a handyman. But you know what? What you're doing is illegal. So do I think there's a right way and a wrong way? Absolutely. Am I glad I went the way that I went? Yeah, because I know handymen that I think are horrible because of shark bites. God, let's just stop right there. I know handymen that will do 90% of their work with shark bites because they don't know how to solder. But I tell you what's even worse than that, a licensed plumber that sells a shark bite as a real plumbing job installation. To me, if they're going to pay you plumber's wages, do it right, not with a shark bite. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'll get off my soapbox now. Jack's Plumbing, are different plumbing companies better than others? Uh, use Geneva products. Is that okay? Or Genova. Uh, I'm not sure about Genova. Not very familiar with it. Uh, but I will tell you this. Yeah, some plumbing companies are better than others. I know a lot of plumbing companies that, man, they'll let anybody go do the job. They, they may never have a journeyman, never have a master, never have anybody on it. I also know some plumbing companies that they'll take sewer cameras and they'll stick a video in it of roots and tell people that that's their sewer. And I don't know if it's the plumbing company or the plumber, but for plumbing companies to allow that blows my mind. When I get a plumber like that, when I get a plumber that is not working towards our culture, I let him go immediately because he's going to hurt the company. He's going to drag it down. And you can say, well, you can't let him go for that. If he's not doing things I ask, isn't that insubordination? Isn't that doing things wrong? Because say I go to work for a company and they tell me I have to wear jeans and I wear shorts every day. They can let me go. Well, did I do anything wrong? I mean, I still did the job. Yes, but it was insubordination because I didn't listen. So tough way to look at it, but no, they're not all treated. All companies are not created the same. Sam Ham, your boss says he will never work a job in a funeral home because one time he thought he saw a body move working on a job. Have you ever had an extreme moment that made you question going into plumbing? You know, my extreme moment, and it's funny because I talked about this in a, a podcast interview the other day. Mine was a holiday. It was about 10 or 11 at night. I was under a house and trying to fix a water heater. Uh, the TMP, I could tell, wasn't tied in, so I got another to tie it in. And I'm under a house, and I was young. My family was young. My, my son was young. And now I'm under a house, and even though I'm making good money, because it, it was like Christmas Eve, either Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, I don't remember. But I'm sitting there thinking, you know, I could be home with my family, and instead I'm out here. And it did, man. It broke my heart. Uh, so it wasn't anything that scared me or anything like that, but it's one that made me question, why am I doing this? Because I knew that I wanted to be with my family, but I've always been that kind of guy. So my thing was, I decided then, look, I'm going to find a way to get a job where I don't have to be out here on holidays, under houses, doing things that maybe, maybe I didn't want to do. So anyway, guys, if y'all will stop with the questions, and I think y'all may already have because I may be down there. Uh, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Brendan Cox, construction boom. The builders are pushing hard. So before the new owners come back out, come back out, absolutely. Shortages to come from jobs and materials. You know, here's the thing is a lot of owners have said stop. We, we're not going to spend any more money now. We want to wait. And I think that's a smart thing to do. I know a lot of construction workers are upset about it, but, man, We've got to look out for the health of the nation, and I think that's what it's going to take. Uh, and I understand we have to get paid. Do journeyman plumbers work for oil refinery, refineries and power plants, or do they only hire master plumbers? No, you have journeyman, apprentices, masters. You have everybody. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Getting ready to slow it down here. 
Brennan Cox, you put a water heater in a house that had mushrooms growing out of the carpet, put the heater in and went upstairs to get paid. No one was home. They left. Sometimes it's okay not to be the boss. And you know what, Brandon? If, if I own the company, I'll tell you, remove the water heater. Remove it before you leave. Uh, because if they're not there, I mean, you're right. They don't have to pay you. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Liam, hey, so I started doing some work experience. Because of the virus, you stop doing it. You need money but don't have any income. I mean, I get it. Uh, it it's it's going to get hard on us all, guys. And I want you all to know that. And, man, be aware of it. People are going to stop sending money because they need to start looking at what we're going to do in the future. What are we going to do for the next six months if it lasts this long? And I think we've got to be prepared for it. It's embarrassing for people who don't know how to solder. Luckily, you know how to. Good for you. And, man, I feel sorry for people that don't know how, but you're right. It is. It's kind of tough. Uh, Julie Wakefield at Southern Mama Drama, thank you for the plug. You're also glad networking is working for you. Guys, networking will work for everybody. Learn about it. Learn how to do it and get out and try. So, Sam Ham, have you ever heard of a gas meter running fast when it gets old? I thought it would run slow when it gets old. You know, I've seen them run fast, slow. It kind of depends on what's happening. They normally run slower, not faster, but I have seen both. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it tonight. Uh, I know it's been kind of different. We're, we're talking about coronavirus a lot, but I really hope that all y'all are in a position where you're safe. And if you're not in a position where you're safe, get in one where you can get safe. If you need to stay home to take care of you and your family, do it. We're all going to get through this somehow, some way. I'll pray for every one of you. I hope y'all do the same for me. Hope you've enjoyed this. Guys, I'm Roger Wakefield. Remember, tomorrow night, don't forget, see Jane Drill. I know we'll put uh, a link in there earlier, but hope you do it. Thank you all very much. I do appreciate it, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Check me out tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time on CJ and Drill. Jump in and say hello. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.